morning, church family. You need a microphone? I think it's on, isn't it? Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> well. <laughs> the Savior carried the cross for all my debts he paid the cost salvation complete now forever I'm free Calvary covers it all sin and shame don't count anymore all praise to the one who has ransomed my soul separate us from mercy and grace he is faithful to save oh his blood never fails Calvary covers it all
Let's return to our seats. All right, as Pastor Marsha mentioned at the beginning of the service, we're having, we're having baptisms today after the morning service. And we will go through the morning service and then we will adjourn to the fellowship hall. Everyone is invited. And we will conduct baptism there for those who have decided that they want to demonstrate their faith by Christian baptism. So it's always a blessed time, it's a fun time. And so we hope that you will uh, stay and come next door and see what we do. And uh, it'll be a blessing to you. If it's not a blessing to you, then please contact me and I'll tell you how it can be a blessing to you. You know, you obviously need a little blessing training. <laughs> One of the unique things about the Christian faith is that we believe that there is communication between ourselves and God. It's not a matter of us just praying and offering prayers to God. It is rather the fact and the confidence that we have that he answers us and he speaks to us and he gives us guidance and instructions and does not leave us out there to wander around on our own. Most of us have been wandering around on our own for a long time and it hasn't really worked out that well. And so we now know that we have the confidence and we have the faith that God will speak to us. And so I'm going to speak to you this morning about just how God does that. How you can tell that it's God and what, he, what methods he uses to speak to you. This is important. It's important for you to understand that God speaks to you. Because one of the things it does is it shows that you're really a believer. If you understand that God speaks to you that you're a believer in God's family, that he has instructions for you and that he's willing and able and ready to pass on to you what would be best for your life. The other advantage of knowing that God speaks to us is that it protects you from making mistakes if you are looking for him for guidance and he speaks to you and gives it to you. It also produces success in your life. It helps you in various areas because he speaks to you and guide you if you're listening. Now there are four attitudes, four attitudes that we can have, one of each of these four, that make this work for us, that make it possible for God to speak to us and for us to hear him and to use his guidance. If you have one of these four attitudes, you have to understand that three of them are going to work against you. But these are, the, these are the attitudes, and Jesus describes them for us. First place, if you have a closed mind, you don't think God does speak to you, hasn't spoken to you, doesn't listen to you, then it's going to make it very difficult for him to give you the guidance that you want and need. If you have a shallow mind and a superficial or preoccupied mind, mind. What would be the characteristics of somebody with a shallow, preoccupied, superficial mind? I'm sure several names come to mind, you know, <laughs> people that just don't seem to give any attention to it. But we are living in an age where we have a lot of shallow-minded people, preoccupied people, and so consequently they find it very difficult to hear God's guidance as God speaks to them. So it's either superficial or preoccupied. Closed mind, superficial mind, preoccupied mind, those are three kinds of attitudes that if you carry them in your own mind, it's going to make it very difficult for God to speak to you. You may cry out, usually in times of desperation, of some kind you may cry out and say, oh God, help me, show me what to do, what's the answer? But if you are preoccupied, if you have a shallow mind, if you have a closed mind, you probably will not hear the answer. Well, then of course, the best attitude to have is to have a willing mind. You want to hear God's voice. You believe that you can hear God's voice. You have a willing mind. Now, the Bible tells us that God wants to talk to us. And the Bible is full of examples of God talking to people. It's how we have the Bible. If God did not speak to people, we would not have the Bible. 
So that's what it is. Those people who heard God speak to them wrote what God said to them. God uses a lot of different ways to communicate. For Moses, he used a burning bush. You remember that? Yeah. I've heard about that. Yeah, okay, okay. That's what he used. Got Moses' attention, you know. Saw a burning bush. For Jacob in the Old Testament, there was an angel. For the nation of Israel, as they were coming out into the wilderness, he used a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. These were all methods that God had in communicating with his people. It says this in Job 33, 14. Job, you know, is back there in the Old Testament. It's the book in the Bible that you probably pronounced Job, but it's pronounced Job. And Job was having very difficult times, and he was surrounded by a bunch of friends that were not that encouraging. But Job said this, read this with me, will you? God speaks in different ways, but we don't always recognize his voice. There you go. He speaks to us in a lot of different ways, but we're not paying attention. We don't recognize his voice. So this morning, I'm going to look at six of the ways that God wants to speak to you. There are six of them. These aren't the only ways. There are many more. But these six are very common, and they're available to nearly all of us. Six of the ways that God speaks. I've got to drink a little water now and then because I'm taking pills. You know what that means? Yeah. You dry out. Yeah, you, get, you dry out. See, so, Yeah, and I promise you it's water. Yeah. That would be terrible if somebody slipped something else in there. <laughs> I don't want to give any of you any bright ideas. A little practical joke. Just leave the water alone. You know. mm -hmm. Six of the ways God speaks to us. Number one. God speaks to us through the Bible. The Bible. You've heard of the Bible? Yes. Okay. Actually, it's probably the number one way that God speaks to us. He does it through his word, the Bible. God's not going to write it in, a sky, in the sky for you, as we sometimes wish he would, making it clear to us and the rest of the Sacramento Metroplex. He doesn't need to write it in the skies. He's already written it in a book. And so he speaks to us in the Bible. It says this in 1 Timothy, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 3.16. Read this with me. Here we go. Everything in the scriptures is God's word. All of it is useful for teaching and helping people and for correcting them and showing them how to live. That's what it's there for. He's written it down in a book so that we know what to do. So why did God give us the Bible? He gave us the Bible to teach us, to help us, to correct us, to show us how to live. That's why he gave it to us. If you go through life and you can never figure out what to do, my guess is you're not reading the Bible that much because the answers are there. But it is true, and I would be the first to admit it, some parts of the Bible are kind of hard to understand. Have you noticed that? Yeah, yeah, they are hard to understand. We, we read it and we say, why did he say that? But it's all there for a reason. What's the reason? The reason is to help you, see? So it's not that the Bible is not helpful. It's just that you don't understand it. And that's why we offer the 201 class here. It's a class that teaches you how to understand the Bible, how to study the Bible, how to read it, memorize it, meditate on it. It gives you answers. Yeah. It says this in Psalms 119, 105. Read it with me. Your word is a lamp to guide me and a light for my path. So the Bible says that it is a flashlight. That's what it's for. It's a flashlight. It's a lamp to guide me. It's a light for my path. It's not a high intensity beam that allows you to see three years down the road. It just is enough for the next step. That's what it does. So, God says that the Bible is a flashlight for life. Hmm. One step, then another step, then another. 
He gives you just enough light for the day, for this day. Hmm. If he showed you all the future, we think we would like to know that. But if he showed you all the future, it wouldn't require any faith to live it. And the point is faith. The first way God speaks is through his word. Number two. God speaks to us through gifted teachers. Gifted teachers. It says in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 11th verse through 12th verse. Read it with me. Christ gifted some of us to be apostles, prophets, missionaries, pastors, and teachers, so that his people would learn to serve and his body would grow strong. And we have gifted teachers here in this church. See? They teach Sunday school classes. They teach special workshops. They do all of these things. And you will find that the more that you involve yourselves in those kind of classes, the more that you will learn, the more that it will be helpful to you. So let me ask you this question. How do you know? How do you know if when somebody's talking, they have the gift from God to be a teacher anyway? Maybe they're just up there just running off at the mouth. How do you know this? Well, you can tell because there usually comes a moment as they're teaching when you suddenly feel that God is speaking directly to you. You can tell. See? You get that. The Holy Spirit will come and give you that assurance. It says in Romans, the 12th chapter, in the 6th verse, read this with me. It says, God in his kindness gave each of us different gifts. If your gift is speaking God's word, make sure what you say agrees with the faith. So if someone, anyone, but if someone has the gift of teaching, what they are teaching is going to agree with the Bible. It's just going to do it. It's not going to be something different than what the Bible teaches. See, this is not about being able to tell a good story, you know. It's about God speaking to you through what somebody is saying as they say it. It says in 1 Corinthians 2.13, read it with me. We do not speak in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit as we explain spiritual truths to those who have the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's always at work there. In the speaker, in the listener, that's how it works. He's continually doing that. All right, number three. God speaks to us through godly friends and family. Friends and family. He speaks to us. That's one of the ways he communicates. Now, this is, of course, particularly true if, if they're believers, these friends and family. This is one way of hearing God speak to us that we often kind of discount because we kind of have the habit of ignoring those who are closest to us. You notice that at all? Just kind of ignoring what they tell you? Nobody here like that, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we kind of discount it or devalue it. We have a tendency to say, well, it's just mom, it's just dad, you know, it's just my brother, my sister, it's just my friend. We don't realize that God actually puts people around you to convey helpful directions and information to you. He does that. See? God often speaks through godly friends and family members. Has a lot to say about these things in the book of Proverbs. Here's Proverbs 12, 26. Read it with me. The godly give wise advice to their friends. The wicked lead them astray. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. God has told us repeatedly that the worst sin is not adultery. The worst sin is not murder. It's not abortion, you see. The worst sin is pride. Tells us repeatedly, the worst sin is pride. It's been pointed out repeatedly that the middle letter of the word pride is I. Yeah, I. Why is that? Well, it's because pride makes me defensive and it makes me unteachable. Who are you to tell me things, to tell me what to do? Who are you? See? Work on your own life. 
person doesn't have to have their own life perfect for them to point out something in your life. When we're prideful, we build up walls and we keep people away. Then we can't hear God's voice speaking through other people. We're too busy defending ourselves, you know. Okay, here's, here's a verse from Proverbs that you probably ought to put, you know, on your refrigerator door. Are you ready? It says, Stupid people always think they are right. Yeah, you ran right along, didn't you? <laughs> Stupid people <laughs> always think they are right. Mm -hmm. Don't be putting that up on your husband's mirror. <laughs> See? Put it on your side. And of course it does say, right after that, it says, wise people listen to advice. Mm. Love says, I love you enough as a friend to not let you do this, whatever it is. Don't blow your life. Don't walk into that relationship. I care enough. I'll risk our relationship because I love you. When you do that, God will speak through you when you are speaking out of a heart of love. It says Proverbs 27, 6. Read it with me. Wounds from a friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. You get that? You don't have it? You don't have it up there? Mm, okay. Well, let me give it to you again. Okay. Wounds from a friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. Yeah. You may think you're getting a kiss from an enemy. It may just be a bite. Mm. Number four. God speaks through impressions or ideas from the Holy Spirit. Through impressions or ideas from the Holy Spirit. Here's how it works. God gives you thoughts, suggestions, impressions, inspiration in your mind. When God talks, we call it inspiration. When Satan talks, we call it temptation. It says in John 14, 26, read it with me. The Holy Spirit will be your teacher and will bring to your mind all I have said to you. He will help you remember. You say, I can't remember. He will help you remember if that is truly your desire. This is Jesus talking here, okay? The Bible says the Holy Spirit, our teacher, it also calls him our counselor. He's like a personal coach, a mentor. See if I can stay, sit up here and not fall off. Always so undignified to fall off. Okay. All right. Notice it says it will bring to your mind. Okay? The Holy Spirit speaks directly to your mind. He will do this. He doesn't speak in an audible voice. I've never heard God speak in an audible voice. I'm not particularly confident in people who tell me they have heard God speak in an audible voice. I heard God say blah, 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 blah. Don't think so. See? Why would he need to speak in an audible voice? He goes direct, straight into my mind. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. This is Romans 8, 16. Read it with me. The Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our heart and tells us that we are God's children. Now, there are two extremes about this that you need to watch out for. There's the rationalist, that person who rationalizes everything, okay, who says, none of the ideas I get are from God. I don't believe God can talk to me. There are people who say that. And then there's the mystic. And the mystic who says, every idea I get is from God. See? Both of these are wrong. Both of them are mistaken. There's a balance between these two extremes. And we're going to talk about the balance in the next couple of weeks. But here's the thing. Don't let the fanatics keep you from experiencing the real thing. Okay? Don't be so afraid of going overboard that you don't open your mind to let God speak to your heart and to your mind. 
Don't let them take control of your life that way. This is Job again. It's in the 33rd chapter. Let's read this together. God speaks again and again in dreams, in visions of the night, as they lie on their beds. He opens their ears in times like that and gives them wisdom and instruction, causing them to change their minds and keeping them from pride and from falling into some trap. Why does God speak to us as we're laying on our bed? Well, it's because we're relaxed and we're listening for a change. You know, that's why. You're less defensive, you're less distracted more open to what God wants to say to you. So that's why you can hear God speak to you. I find that God speaks to me in the shower. You know? There's practically no chance there's going to be any outside interference from that conversation. <laughs> so he speaks to me and I hear him. Mm -hmm. Ask God a specific question at night. You might try this. Ask God a specific question at night just before you go to sleep. And you will be amazed at the times you wake up and the answer is there. This is an amazing thing. And it's a practical way to put it to work. Now, I'm not endorsing your dream life, understand me. Most dreams are nothing more than emotional static, like the snow on your TV screen. Okay. They are not to be relied on in your waking life. I talk to people every once in a while and they tell me about dreams they've had and what it means and so forth. They give me the creeps, you know. Uh, I don't believe it. Uh, but God will speak to you in your moments of rest and relaxation if you'll just give him a chance. Hmm. But remember, God will never contradict what he has said in his word, but he does speak through impressions. Always test your impressions by the Bible. God never contradicts what he's already said. Never does. Well, here's number five. I don't like this one. But it is true. Number five. God speaks to us through pain. He speaks to us through pain. I want him to speak to me through fun. But the fact is that most of the time when I'm having fun, I'm not paying that much attention. So he speaks to us through pain. God loves us so much that he will even resort to pain to speak to us. Sometimes pain is the only way God can get your attention in a circumstance. I'm not saying that all pain in our lives is God trying to speak to us. That is not true. But it is true that some of the painful circumstances I face, God speaks to me through those circumstances. We've all seen that happen in our lives. God uses pain when he can't get us to slow down and listen. It's a painful verse, but it's true. Proverbs again, Proverbs 20, 30, read it with me. Sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change your ways. Oh, yeah. It's when we hit bottom and when we finally look up. I bet, I can bet that there are some of you that hit bottom this week. God has brought you here this morning to say to you, look up, look up. You know, there's better things to add. Listen through that painful circumstance and you face this week. God wants to let you know that he loves you. He wants you to know that. And he loves you more than you can imagine. It says in Psalms 119, verse 71, read it with me. It says, the suffering you sent was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your principles. David wrote that after he had been through a lot of suffering. And after he'd gone through all of that, and he still could say, it was good for me. That was good for me. I learned. This is a quote, one of my favorite quotes from C.S. Lewis. You've heard me give it before. You'll probably hear me give it again. Number six. It says, as C.S. Lewis wrote, God whispers to us in our pleasures, but he shouts at us in our pain. 
whispers to us in our pleasures, shouts to us in our pain. See, God may be shouting at you right now. He might be saying, I love you. I have a different, much better plan for your life. Just pay attention. And this is interesting because it's number six and it says this. It says, God speaks through silence. Silence. Sometimes God speaks by saying nothing. He speaks by remaining silent. This is pretty frustrating for us. But God has his reasons when he is silent and you'd better just wait and trust him. There's a lot of examples of this in the Bible. King Saul, first king of Israel, was preparing to go into battle. But he hadn't really been right with God. Not for some time. So now he comes to God and he asks, God, what do you want me to do in this battle? Since he hadn't been talking to God for a long time and he had been doing the wrong things, <laughs> the Bible says God was silent when he came to him says for us in 1 Samuel 28, 6, it says, Saul prayed to God, but God didn't answer, neither by dream, nor by sign, nor by prophet. And we can see in this verse here, as we read about this, that Saul tried three different ways to find out an answer, and none of them worked. Not a one of them. And he became impatient, and he became angry, and desperate, and he did what was strictly forbidden to do. He consulted a fortune teller, a medium. He was told not to do that, but he went and did it. He knew it was wrong, but he did it anyway. And as a result of doing that, not paying attention, even to God's silence, as a result of doing that, he lost everything. The battle, his reputation, finally his life. This is not innocent stuff. It takes place. See? If you're looking to anything else besides God for guidance, you are on very thin ice. Only God can give you guidance for the future. So what do you do? What do you do when God is silent? Well, you do two things. It says in Job 34, Job has a lot of experience in all this. It says, read it with me, if God is silent, what's that to you? If he turns his face away, what can you do about it? But whether silent or hidden, he is there ruling. Mm -hmm. He's there. In other words, remember, God is in control. He's in charge. He's in charge, and you are not. And so you trust him. It says in Psalms, the 50th chapter, the 14th verse. Read it. I want you to trust me in your times of trouble so I can rescue you and you can give me glory. I believe that God is asking that question of you today, right here in this service. God is asking you, will you trust me with that financial problem, that ache in your heart, that stress that's a part of your life, that loneliness? Will you trust me, he asks. That's the big issue of life. Will you trust God? Bow your heads with me, would you please? I'm going to pray this prayer, and I want you to follow along in your mind as I pray this prayer. Dear God, I don't want to go through life without hearing from you. I want to learn to listen. Thank you for the Bible. Help me to read it, your word. Thank you for gifted teachers and help me to act on what they teach and help me to make some godly friends that I can trust and listen to. I want to be open to the ideas that you place in my mind. When I'm in pain, help me to learn from it and not to run from it. And most of all, help me to trust you and your plan when you're silent. Jesus Christ, I want to get to know you and love you like you love me. 
In your name I pray. Amen. Three basic ways in which a person can be baptized. They can be baptized either by immersion, which is, or by sprinkling, or by pouring. And it's entire, it makes no difference because the baptism is actually an inward work of grace. You see, it hasn't got anything to do with the ritual so much. But it's supposed to be by water. And uh, we know that uh, if individuals, it, it's up to the individual to decide how they want to be baptized, either by immersion or by sprinkling or by pouring. Never really seen anybody baptized by pouring. Sounds like a drenching affair. <laughs> but we do have one of our candidates this morning who wishes to be baptized by sprinkling. We have two of our candidates, okay. There may be more as we go along. So I would ask them to come forward at this time. Kathy Brown. Okay. All right. Bernadette. So by submitting to Christian baptism, you are testifying to the fact that you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, rose from the grave, and lives in heaven. And you are taking testimony, public testimony of that, before these people here and before all the world, actually. Do you agree with that? Do you believe that? All right. Kathy Brown, I baptize you in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you be blessed and surrounded by these works of grace and experience His presence in your heart right now, as you have already. May you go in the power of His presence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Come now and know and feel her through her. May she be surrounded by your grace. May the statement of faith that you make this morning go with you throughout your life, follow you completely, and surround you with his presence in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Here's what we do. We ask you to be very enthusiastic as these people come up out of the water because this is a time for rejoicing and celebration. So we begin. Turn around this way. Okay. Hold your nose. Put that in. Yeah. Turn the elbow with his hand. Step up a little bit. This is Derek Green, one of our members of our board, member of this church, and it is my honor to baptize him now into the faith of Jesus Christ. So, with Derek, I come to you right now and I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is Derek's son, Michael. He's one of, been a member of our church for a long time. Gives me a great deal of pleasure to baptize him. Okay. Michael Green, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, Reuben, around, face this way. This is Reuben Morales. He comes in a declaration of his faith. Hold your nose. There you go. Reuben Morales, it gives me great pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. gives me a great deal of pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is Toledo Lee, and he comes now for Christian baptism. I'll take a glass of Toledo Lee, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you don't see a lot of Javier, although you know him, because he's always up on the tech deck operating for us. Okay. Your nose with that. Okay. So Javier Penedit gives me a great deal of pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it gives me a great deal of pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay. That's everybody. Okay. That's everybody. We are, we are great. Right? Don't be running off. Don't be heading for the cookies yet. Okay. <laughs> Let me have a word of prayer with you. Father, we are grateful that we have this privilege of these who have come and offered themselves in Christian baptism. We just pray, dear Lord, that you will bless their lives and bless the lives of this congregation. We believe, dear Lord, that this fine class of people to be baptized is evidence that your church here in the corner of 28th and S Street is working and is going ahead and building your kingdom, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Bless these refreshments and our time together in Jesus' name. God bless you. Here we go.